Hello everybody! So today, we will be discussing adjusting entries. Okay, so in our previous lesson, dumaan na tayo sa first four steps of the accounting cycle. The analysis of source documents and then journalizing, posting, and the preparation of the initial and unadjusted trial balance. Now, we are ready to start with the fifth step of the accounting cycle in which the documents needed for adjustments are being prepared and analyzed. Now, in that step, dito na natin gagawin yung tinatawag nating adjusting entries. Okay, so let's define first what an adjusting entry is or what adjusting entries are. Okay, adjusting entries are entries made at the end of the accounting period before closing procedures to update balances of asset, liability, revenue, and expense accounts to make their balances ready for the preparation of financial statements. So in the definition, it is said that these are entries. Okay, so journal entries din siya na ginagawa natin. Okay, kailan daw po? At the end of the accounting period. So kung monthly yung accounting period mo, month end. Kung yearly yung accounting period mo, year end adjustment siya. Okay, kailan ginagawa? Before closing procedures. Meron kasi tayong step in the accounting cycle na tinatawag nating closing procedures. So, ang um, adjustments ay ginagawa bago tayo mag-close, accounting close. Okay? Now, para saan daw po yung adjusting entries? Update balances of asset, liability, revenue, and expense accounts. Ina-update natin kung tama ba yung mga balance na nakalagay natin sa ledger. Para saan? To make them ready for the preparation of our financial reports or financial statements. So that, pag nilabas na natin yung financial reports, pag nilabas na natin yung financial statements, yung ating mga balances na naka-report doon, tama and updated. Okay? So, let's first have some examples of adjusting entries and let's try to relate it in real-life situations. Let's say, for example, here in the Philippines, gumagamit na tayo, di ba, ng beep card, yung transportation card. Then, ginagamit natin siya sa ating main uh, uh, light rail transit lines. LRT Line 1, Line 2, and our MRT. Okay. So, minsan, ang ginagawa natin, lalo na kayo, mga estudyante, minsan, ginagawa natin, kunyari, yung ating beep card, lo-loadan natin ng 100 pesos. So, yung beep card mo ngayon, meron siyang 100 pesos sa loob. In accounting terms, anong tawag doon? Prepaid transportation. Bakit? Yung 100 pesos na binayad mo, na naging load ng beep card mo, nagamit mo na ba sa transportation? Hindi pa naman eh. At dahil hindi mo pa siya nagagamit, prepaid transportation yon. Tapos syempre, anong gagawin mo? Pagpunta mo ngayon, kunyari, monumento station tayo ng LRT Line 1. Tapos pupunta ka ng Vito Cruz Station, Hill po yan, station, somewhere na malayo. Okay? And then, edi, anong gagawin mo sa Monumento Station? Tatap mo ngayon yung beep card, lalabas yung iyong balance doon. Magkano nakalagay? 100 pesos pa rin kasi hindi mo pa siya nagagamit. Edi, pasok ka na ngayon, tapos, eto na, nasa train platform ka na, nihintay mo yung train, nahanap ka ng, ng makakrasyan mo. Tapos, <laughs> Tapos, ito na, parating na yung trend. Noong parating na yung trend, sumakay ka. Pagsakay mo ng trend, turun-turun na stasyon, hanggang sa nakababa ka sa destination mo. Noong bumaba ka sa destination mo, anong gagawin mo? Lalabas mo ulit yung beep card mo kasi itatap mo ulit para makalabas ka ng turnstile. Mapapansin mo, ang balance na lang ng iyong prepaid transportation card ay 70 pesos. Yung 30 pesos nakaltas na. So, anong nangyari ngayon? Saan tayo nag-start? 100 pesos na prepaid transportation card. Pagdating mo sa destination mo, gumastos ka na ng 30 pesos. Anong tawag na dun sa 30 pesos? Transportation expense. Pero, meron ka pang 70 pesos. Anong tawag dun sa 70 pesos? Prepaid transportation. O hindi, pareho ka nang merong asset tsaka expense. So, ganun din yung gagawin natin sa adjusting entry. If we will be making our example in a real more accounting situation, the 100 pesos that you paid for is prepaid transportation and that is an asset. And then, 
pagdating mo sa destination mo, nagkaroon ka na ng 30 pesos na transportation expense. Pero, at the end of the period, meron ka pang 70 pesos na natitirang prepaid transportation. So, ang asset mo, 70 pesos, prepaid transportation. Tapos, may expense kang i-report na 30 pesos, transportation expense. Yun yung sinasabi natin na kailangang i-update, asan yung word update ito? Kailangang i-update yung balances ng asset, liability, revenue, and expense natin kasi kulang pa yung ginawa nating analysis nung nirecord natin yung mga transactions nung time na nag-journalize tayo. Okay, so we have different types of adjusting entries. We have prepaid expenses, deferred revenue, accrued revenue, accrued expenses, depreciation of assets, and all other subsequent measure, oh, sorry, uncollectible accounts and all other subsequent measurements of assets and liabilities. Okay, so let's talk about them one by one. Prepaid expenses are expenses that was that was paid for in advance by a company. Best example, prepaid rent, advance payment ng renta, prepaid insurance. Okay? Kung baga, yan yung ginagamit natin na nagbabayad tayo ng advance for some expenses na nagiging pambala natin sa mga susunod na panahon. So, from asset, nagiging expense. Okay? So, ang prepaid expenses starts as an asset and then, syempre, yung asset mong yun na expire parang yung ginawa natin kanina, di ba, na prepaid transportation, naging transportation expense, nagkakaroon na expiration. So, yung asset na expire nagiging expense. Okay? So, it happens that way. Next, we have is deferred revenue. Ang deferred revenue naman ay tayo yung nakareceive ng advance payment galing sa mga clients or customers natin. So, ang mangyayari, parang tayo ngayon yung may utang sa kanila. At anong utang natin sa kanila? Yung service na hindi pa natin nare-render sa kanila. But, at that time na ma-render na natin yung service sa kanila, na-earn na natin siya bilang revenue. So, deferred revenue starts as a liability. And then, it becomes revenue. Okay? We also have accrued revenue. Ang accrued revenue naman, ikaw balik ka ng deferred revenue. Ang accrued revenue naman, ikaw ang nauna. No? Your company has already given the services. No? So, nakapag-render ka na ng service. Bayad ka na ng customer mo, hindi pa. Okay? So, sa accrued revenue, ang nangyayari dito is na-earn na natin ang revenue. Pero nakakolek na tayo ng payment, wala pa. Okay? So, ang payment ay wala pa. Okay? Sa accrued expenses naman, meron na tayong expense, hindi pa natin nababayaran. Okay? So, expenses were already incurred na incur na nagkaroon na na expense no pero na bayaran na natin hindi pa din okay so dito sa dalawang to pag accrued revenue nagawa na natin yung service pero hindi pa nagbabayad si customer so anong meron tayo dito receivable dito naman sa accrued expenses eh meron na tayong expense pero hindi pa natin nababayaran so anong meron tayo dito payable okay next we also have Asset depreciation. Ang asset depreciation naman ay siyempre yung mga assets natin, uh, most especially yung mga malalaki nating machineries, equipment, furniture, uh, through time, naluluma yan, nasisira, kasi siyempre ginagamit natin. In accounting, we have a systematic way of allocating kung magkano talaga yung pagkaluma na yon, yung pagkasira na yon. Uh, kasi siyempre habang ginagamit natin, yung performance ng mga assets na yun, nagde-decline. And in accounting, we put a monetary amount on those assets, uh, on those uh, uh, na pagkaluma, no? wear, tear, obsolescence. Kaya ang tawag po natin dun ay depreciation. We also have uncollectible accounts. Ito yung mga receivable na baka hindi na natin ma-receive. So, nagiging expense yun. Okay, ang tawag dun is uncollectible accounts expense or bad debts expense. Bad debts. Okay? And then lastly, subsequent measurement of asset and liability accounts. Okay, ito namang subsequent measurement, um, pang higher accounting to, same with uh, uncollectible accounts, yung mga impairment loss ng asset, 
yung mga amortization ng intangible assets. So, medyo mga high caliber accounting words na yung binabanggit ko. Okay? So, uncollectible accounts at subsequent measurement of assets and liability, you will be talking about this in higher accounting. Okay? So, uh, for FABM1, what we, what we will be talking about in the succeeding videos is from here up to here. Okay? So, we have different examples that will be available for you for prepaid expenses, deferred revenue, accruals, and asset depreciation. Okay? Uh, we can call collectively number three and four as accruals. Okay? Now, adjusting entries adhere to the following accounting principles. So, remember yung ating mga pinag-aralan in the previous videos na accounting concepts and principles. So, some of them are, are, are applicable on why we do adjusting entries. Okay? So, first is completeness. Completeness, uh, okay, so adjusting entries uh, adheres to completeness because all of the transactions are being recorded properly. Okay? Baka meron tayong hindi na-record na, na, na gawa na nating service, hindi na-record as receivable. Kulang ang revenue natin. O di kaya, meron na pala tayong expense, pero dahil hindi pa nababayaran, di mo na-record, nako mali yun. Okay? So, dapat complete pa rin yung transactions na na-report natin. Freedom from error. Error po na maituturing kapag hindi ka nag-adjust kasi hindi mo na-update yung balances. Eh. Okay? So, dapat na update natin yung balances ng, asset, ng ating asset, liability, revenue, and expenses. Kaya it also adheres to freedom from error. And then, timeliness. Ang pinag-uusapan kasi natin dito din is passage of time. Lalo na sa mga prepaid rent natin. Kunyari, prepaid rent mo, 6 months, dumaan na yung isang buwan. O dapat na-report mo na yung isang buwan na expire na yung uh, rental nun. Okay? So, we are, uh, we are reporting these amounts timely. Sabi nga natin, if it's not timely, it's not relevant anymore. It also adheres to accrual basis of accounting, lalo na dito, di ba? Sa accruals kasi, uh, kahit anong mangyari, whether or not cash is received or paid already by the company, basta nangyari yung transaction, kailangan ma-record mo na yung related revenue and expense. Same also with revenue recognition principle, na whatever happens, even though payment is not yet received from the customer, then you record the revenue, basta nagawa mo na yung service. Na and lastly, matching principle. Uh, balik tayo sa matching principle. Ang matching principle ay we match revenue and expenses in order for us to see if we have net income or net loss. However, how can you properly measure the income or the loss that was, uh, that was enjoyed or incurred by the company if the revenue and expense is wrong? Okay? So, it also adheres to the matching principle. In this video, we will be talking about uh, an example for prepaid expenses. And uh, there is also a handout for this specific lesson. Okay, so medyo aalis muna tayo sa landing on new travel services company kasi I will be giving you um, examples regarding these adjusting entries. Okay, pag na-discuss na natin to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 na ito, babalik tayo sa landing on new travel services company. Gagawa natin siya ng adjusting entries iya apply natin lahat ng napag-aralan natin dito sa mga videos na to. Okay? So, please uh, download the related handout for this specific video. It is in the description box below. And we're ready to discuss prepaid expenses. Okay, so now let's start discussing adjustments on prepaid expenses. Please, again, download the handout that is available in the description box. So, nandun po yung link, then you download and print it for facilitation of discussion. But the problem is written here, okay? So, let's discuss prepaid expenses and let me read to you first the problem. Jim and Company purchased office supplies on August 1, 2020, amounting to 100,000, in which the company immediately paid in cash at December 31, 2020, which coincides to be the end of the accounting period. Inventory records show that the amount of remaining office supplies amount to 40,000. Okay, so in accounting, it's uh, more uh, beneficial for you if you will be learning a bit more English rather than mathematics. Because the level of mathematics that we just actually need in accounting is just MDAS, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. But the level of analysis that you need in reading these English paragraphs will be very important 
So you need to assess your level of English comprehension because it will really help you answer problems in accounting. Accounting is more of English actually rather than mathematics as what they say. Okay, so let's just try to interpret. Okay, so it goes like this. Jim and Company purchase office supplies amounting to 100,000. Kailan binili? August 1, 2020. And then, at the end of the period on December 31, so pag nakabasa kayo ng ganitong problem, most probably the problem pertains to a company with annual reporting period. Kasi December 31 eh, so annual reporting period to. Buong taon, okay? Now, yung binili nilang office supplies, 100,000. And then at the end of the year, the records show na ang natira na lang daw na office supplies is 40,000. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na importance ng adjusting entries. It's wrong to report in your financial statements office supplies of 100,000 when in reality, at the end of the year, the office supplies is only 40,000. So, kailangan i-adjust talaga natin. Okay, so let's prepare the journal entries to represent the initial entry and the mismo adjusting entry and how to analyze it. Okay, let's start. Okay, so let's do the entry for August 1. Okay, so the entry for the purchase of office supplies is just the same as how you know it. Nagkaroon tayo ng office supplies. So you debit office supplies. Amounting to 100,000. And then the problem tells you that it was immediately paid in cash, so we credit here cash. If the problem tells you that it was on account and the, your entry would be debit office supplies credit accounts payable, no problem with that. Okay? Now let's analyze. Uh, the company purchased office supplies worth 100,000. Pero, 40,000 na lang siya at the end of the period. So, if your office supplies that you purchased is 100,000, and then, ang natira na lang daw na office supplies, what was remained at the end of the accounting period is just 40,000. So, we try to deduct. 100,000 minus 40,000 will give you an amount of 60,000. Ito yung use office supplies. Kung ito ang remaining, yung 40,000, eh di 60,000 yung used natin na office supplies. And this represents office supplies expense. Okay? So, on December 31, let's prepare the adjusting entry to adjust the amount of office supplies. Again, mali na i-report natin sa financial statements ang office supplies mo ay 100,000 pa when in reality, ang natira na lang is 40,000. So, we have office supplies expense of 60,000. So, we debit Debit office supplies expense for the expense portion or the used portion of the office supplies, which is 60,000, and then credit office supplies. Bakit ko kinredit ang office supplies? Tatanggalin natin sa office supplies account yung nagamit na nating 60,000 na office supplies because it is already an expense. Okay? So, let's try to put them in T-accounts on how to properly present it. So, this is your T-account for office supplies and then this is for your office supplies expense. Okay. Debit office supplies, 100,000. So, this goes here. Then, credit cash of 100,000. So, di ko napapakita. And then, your adjusting entry. Debit office supplies expense, 60,000. And then, credit office supplies, 60,000. So, we credit it here, 60,000. And then, let's update rule and balance the T-accounts. So, 100,000 minus 60,000, 40,000. Tama lang because... 
Office supplies remained at the end of the accounting period is 40,000. Ito yun. And then our office supplies expense, yung nagamit na office supplies is 60,000. However, some companies would have this mindset. Binili na natin yung 100,000 office supplies, ginastos na natin, expense na yan. So other companies would make this entry. Diretso sa office supplies expense. Okay? 100,000. And then credit. Cash. 100,000. Sorry ah, kasi kulang ako ng space. Okay. Other companies would do it that way. Eh, ginasto sa natin. So lahat yung office supplies na yan, expense na yan. However, yun nga, at the end of the period, nalaman natin na 40,000 pa yung remaining. So, Kung i-analyze mo ulit, 100,000 yung office supplies mong binili and then 40,000 pa pala yung remaining. So, ang expense mo lang dapat talaga, 60,000. Eh, bakit ang expense na naka-report mo, 100,000? Sobra ka na expense. So, anong gagawin natin? Babawasan natin. Kasi overstated ito. Sobra ito. So, ano naman ang gagawin natin adjusting entry pagdating ng December 31 kung ganito ang naging unang entry ng company? Babalik na rin natin ito. Okay? So, debit. Office supplies. Kung magkano yung natira? 40,000. And then, credit. Office supplies expense for 40. Thousand. Bakit tayo nag-credit ng office supplies expense para mabawasan from 100,000, babawasan na natin ng 40 para yung office supplies expense natin 60 na lang. Pakita natin din sa T-accounts. Okay? So, this is your office supplies and then this is your office supplies expense. Debit office supplies expense, 100,000. Then, credit cash. And then, debit office supplies, 40,000. Then, credit office supplies expense, 40,000. Okay? Let's try to rule and balance. Office supplies natin, 40,000 remaining. Office supplies expense, 100,000 minus 40,000, which gives you 60,000. Now, tingnan nyo ngayon yung magic. Office supplies under this method is 40,000. Under this method, office supplies is 40,000. And then office supplies expense is 60,000. Office supplies expense is 60,000. Whatever method you may use, it is just the same. Okay? So now, look at what happens. Here, in this method, I... Una siyang ni-record as an asset, and then, ang adjusting entry mo, kung magkano yung expired portion ng asset, kung magkano na yung nagamit. Dito naman sa method na to, lahat sila nire-report as expense. Ang adjusting entry mo naman ay yung unexpired portion yung hindi pa nagagamit. Okay, anong tawag dito sa dalawang method na to? Ito ay ni-record initially as an asset. So, ang tawag dito, asset method. Ito naman, dinerecho as expense. So, ang tawag dito sa method na to, expense method. In the asset method, we initially record it as an asset. The adjusting entry would be the expired portion of the prepayment. In the expense method, we initially record it as an expense, then we adjust the unexpired portion. But whatever method you may use, it should just be the same. Office supplies ay yung remaining natin na hindi pa nagagamit, 40,000. Office supplies expense yung nagamit na, 60,000. It's just the same. Now, pag tinanong kayo, 
how much should be reported in the income statement at the end of the year as office supplies expense? Ang sagot nyo, yung nagami, 60,000. And then, how much should be presented in the balance sheet as office supplies? Ang isasagot nyo naman, yung hindi pa nagagami, 40,000. Okay? So, yan yung ating asset method and expense method on adjustment for prepayments. In the next video, we'll be talking about prepayments on insurance. Prepaid insurance. I hope you understand. So, screenshot nyo na. <laughs> okay, so I hope you understand the lesson today. Thank you and have a great day. Won't you take me home?